हेलो 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 अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी आया नू पखेर आगले नी हाओ चुने शुम में वश मले वो हाय गुंजाई में इस गुटन मॉर्गन ओला बों योर प्रीवियर कई फहाल हाले शुमत चतोरे अहलन वसालन मरहबा बूना मूचो ग्रासिया स्वाबिया भली करे आया एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन फॉर ट्यूनिंग इनटू पीटीबी बॉल यू वाचिंग बॉल दिस मॉर्निंग लॉन्ग साइड शहजाद एहसान खान लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई होप दैट एवरीबॉडी हुज ट्यून्ड इनटू पीटीबी बॉल स्क्रीन्स एज़ वेल in more than 46 different countries we hope that you are doing wonderfully well and that you are looking after yourself very well as well and not just yourself but for all of those people who surround you or who are actually around you as well ladies and gentlemen today it was a tough start for me and uh, so i was just kind of thinking whether i should start with this or not but i thought that it was uh, it's going to be good i mean if you're going to hear me out uh, just keep some patience with you as well for another minute or so and i let you know why i'm saying so as well so ladies and gentlemen you know just on sunday i was out there you know i i was trekking i was out with some, a couple of my friends i was out on the hills and there was this big rock which was just lying uh, by the road side and my car couldn't pass so we kind of tried moving that stone and uh, unfortunately it landed on my foot which is why i've got my shoe laces open it was hard to get my shoe on as well but today the first thing when i got up in the morning my mother was like hey you know what uh, do you feel like going to work i was like um, well i don't know and then you know within my own self i was like you know shazad all of these ups and downs are going to take place in life and you always have to make sure that you show up at work because the simple rule i live by is ladies and gentlemen get up dress up and show up and a lot of things will be streamlined for you as well so for all of those people who are feeling a little low or who are feeling as if you know they don't feel all right i think you just have to go through the day by getting up dressing up and showing up only if you can but if god forbid you know there's something uh, which you think is a bigger problem and you cannot get over it i think you can even consult a doctor or go talk to somebody because talking to someone will actually help you have that catharsis will will actually help you relax as well which is very important and ladies and gentlemen half of the time in life we really do not realize that sharing your problems or talking to somebody or having somebody to listen to you uh, is actually a blessing in this guys and you won't realize it you won't see it because it's very intangible but the results would be very tangible as well and why am i saying so is because of the fact ladies and gentlemen that over here in pakistan we do have some exemplary people who are doing some marvelous work for the right image of pakistan i mean we quite often talk about this as well and i think now that uh, this sentence itself is used very commonly i do not really like it but promoting the soft image i think uh, yeah i think people are doing a wonderful job so this is what we will be talking today as well we will be making sure that you know we talk about how sports are important we talk about how the new technology needs to be integrated we talk about how we really need to make sure that you know all of these youngsters are actually moving into right direction we have people who have actually taken this responsibility to make sure that they are going to streamline the youngsters they are going to use their energies in a way where we will be promoting the soft image of the country or positive image of the country and why not because we are a positive nation and we love positivity indeed so ladies and gentlemen today we very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody who wears a lot of hats a lot of different hats as well she's actually making sure that she's going to promote the right image of pakistan through sports to newer technology she's making sure that she's actually going to be a part of such forum where people will be coming together and doing things collectively because uh, you know i think it's it's better you, you know when 100 people are going to actually join hand rather than one as well but it always takes one person to initiate and then karma badhta chale jata hai aur log shamil hote chale jate hain ladies and gentlemen we were lucky that we've actually been joined by youth activist over here today with us she is the one and only miss anza sakeb hello assalam alaikum good morning Morning. How are you, Shazan? I'm absolutely perfect. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And uh, what a positive morning because I know you said that uh, constantly while you were introducing me. But just the fact that you had the courage to show up, dress up, <laughs> yeah, and all that is, um, I think that in itself says a lot about your personality. You. And I think uh, television in itself is a very powerful medium. It is. Uh, we do often uh, neglect. how much influence the media can have yeah. on young minds i mean i've seen this all over the world um, be it politics be it society be it relationships uh, constantly we're getting these messages subliminally through the media so yeah. 
we uh, have a very important and responsible role as well to exactly. play to give out the right kind of message there. Um, had you not showed up today, <laughs> uh, maybe a lot of young people would have gotten discouraged or not turned up to their workplaces yeah. as well. Exactly. So that, hats off to you. That could have happened. Thank you very much. I think I like this positive uh, remark about myself as well, ladies and gentlemen. It has definitely boosted my morale up as well. But now, uh, Anza, I think, you know, let's get started with the conversation. First things first, you know, I was reading your bio. It was long. You've done some marvelous things and you're on it, Alhamdulillah. What made you realize at such a young age that this is something which you wanted to do and then you kept on going and you're wearing so many hats now? So how do you justify in between, uh, you know, being a youth activist or being somebody who wants to promote sports, who wants to support uh, uh, technology or bring in new technologies as well? So how did you realize in the first place uh -huh. and, then, and then how did you right. go about it? So it's been a journey. Um, I grew up in Karachi. And obviously, you know, everywhere from Time magazine to all these international uh, newspapers, everybody, I kept listening to, uh, you know, the headlines saying Pakistan uh, and more so Karachi is the most dangerous city in the world. And I did not want to live with that narrative yeah, because, uh, you know, I said, you know, everybody is just focusing on the negatives and the international media just keep, uh, keeps promoting and and in the 90s, growing up as a kid in Karachi, you know, with all our ethnic violence yeah, yeah, yeah. and the party systems and the political strife, um, I was like, no, but hang on, the Karachi that I know is different. The school oh. that I go to is different. My friends are different. This is not what life looks like for us. Yep. So maybe it's about constructing the right kind of narrative. And um, so that was one of the reasons. And the second reason was um, that I always wanted to, I was super inspired by superheroes. Yeah. So uh, growing up, I was like, okay, so if things are wrong, it is my, it, the onus lies on me to fix them. Exactly. I'm not going to blame the government. I'm not going to blame uh, the bureaucracy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be the change wow. for myself. And I think it also helped that I grew up with a brother who's a child with special needs. So oh. that in itself um, inculcates a sense of uh, responsibility Empathy. and giving back to society. Yeah, 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 yeah. Empathy, um, patience. And then just uh, never having uh, to say no to anything. Exactly. So uh, I think uh, growing up with these, uh, with with this whole story, um, it really made me want to construct my own narrative. Wow. So I grew up and I um, uh, was involved with this NGO called Pursukun Karachi. Yes. Um, you know, we set on this mission that fine. Um, maybe what you need to do is that maybe young people I saw around me. So I was I grew up as someone who loved reading, yep. but 90% of the people around me did not. <laughs> they said, let's speak to people in their own language. So yeah. do it through music, do it through art, theater, sports. Yeah. Speak to people, bring them together. That's what's, that's what's important. I, I, I think that's what uh, we needed to do, reclaim public spaces, exactly. uh, have conversations, have difficult conversations, but in a light-hearted manner. Exactly. I think it's a, it's, it's a wonderful vision you carried uh, with yourself as well. And I'm glad that, you know, there's, there are people out there who are actually thinking about this as well. And not just that, you know, that, that we will actually have clarity in our mind. Rather, we would have a lot more people with a similar mindset. And I think it's great and it's a great initiative. But just on a very light, lighter note, which superstar do you like the most? Or, sir? Superhero. Yeah, superhero. Yeah. So um, I really liked Supergirl growing up, but then right. uh, I realized that um, uh, Wonder Woman was someone I tilted more towards <laughs> because it's that whole, uh, you know, warrior princess image. Because as young girls, uh, we in our part of the country often tell girls that, okay, so you're weak, you have to be taken care of. Yep. But I was lucky. I grew up with three brothers and then uh, my father was also someone who really, I mean, I owe it to him yeah. to constantly motivate me and push me. That's all right. You can do uh, everything that another boy can. Exactly. And, um, and you, you know, and I think, and I did it, and I did it. So, you know, when I took up uh, kickboxing, I used to Ooh. be, yeah, I did, I did uh, nationals for Pakistan as well in terms of martial wow. arts. So, um, when I was doing sports as a young girl, everyone was like, okay, so she's probably just going to do badminton and throw ball. And I said, no, but I'm not interested <laughs> in badminton and throw ball. I yeah. mean, why construct, uh, you know, these preconceived notions? Exactly. It's like, so boys are supposed to play cricket and football, but girls are supposed to tilt towards badminton yeah. and, you know, so on and so forth, the girly sports. And I said, no, I want to do kickboxing. So everyone was like, you know, no one's going to be interested in you because you're going to ruin your face, you're going to get hurt. I said, well, I could do that um, while learning how to bake or cook as well yeah. or driving a car. I mean, those are the risks <laughs> that are always there. But I thought that also um, now that 
uh, I realize I've trained more than two and a half thousand girls, a lot of young yes, uh, yes, women, children people, yes. that I've trained in terms of self-defense, in terms of, um, you know, sports, um, kickboxing and martial arts. I've realized it's not just the element of sport that's yep. important. It's also empowering young girls yes. because this is this is not uh, something that's just common to our part of the world, but all over the world. Exactly. Young girls need to start feeling safe in their Indeed. skin. You know, harassment is a very real issue. It could happen from the comfort of your home. It is. When we send our kids out there, even young boys, we assume that they're safe, right? And then we don't um, give them, and then we always, uh, if God forbid something happens, we always have this victim mentality, you know. Uh, but I thought that, no, we need to ensure that kids know how to stay safe. Exactly. As much as they can, they should be alert, they should be secure. So I believe, uh, so Wonder Woman is where it came from. So I was like, I want to learn to fight, to defend myself. Wow. You know, a lot of times people ask me, and uh, especially uh, with young men, they're like, you know, you are someone I want to stay away from. <laughs> I said, uh, you know, how many, how many people do you think I beat up? Not a single one. Yeah. It's just um, something, it's, it's a skill. You know how you want to teach people survival? So it's it's you actually a skill it? which is going to enable you to be confident and do whatever yeah, you want to do in absolutely. life, which is great. And I'm not going to ruin your childhood by telling you this, but there's this amazing season with the name of The Boys. Uh -huh. And uh, there are all these superheroes in it, but all of them are corrupt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, so you yeah, might yeah, want to yeah, give I, that I, a look as well. I think I've, I've looked into that as well. <laughs> but I just felt like superheroes in particular uh, was something that resonated well with me because I thought... Um, Okay, so maybe this is a story that resonates well with me, but can I translate this to other young people as well? Yep. So when I started working, and here's an interesting story. So when I started working with uh, kids with special needs, or yep. even kids from uh, downtrodden areas that, didn't, that weren't, um, I di didn't have as many opportunities as yep. other kids, I realized that they lack hope, all right? And what inspires them? So, um, you know, something that would inspire them would be superheroes right yeah. so we often my friends and i used to do this thing for fun we used to dress up as superheroes and carry goodie bags and all kinds of things and go go visit their orphanages go visit uh, schools with uh, kids with special needs and really try and give them that uh, hope because we grew up with that hope that okay no matter what happens there's going to be someone to save us exactly. you could find that in a political figure yep. you could find that in uh, your parent exactly you could find that in another fictional hero and that's okay that's a good narrative to grow up with exactly i mean with all uh, that's been going on rather than uh, looking up to someone that's a mafia dawn or whatever i think this is a much rather <laughs> this is a good image clean superman yeah. you know morally correct and everything and it's wonderful as well and ladies and gentlemen i've been saying it uh, for quite a lot of time i've said it quite a lot of times as well that you know that the media has actually got a very important role to play for example there were these times when in 90s you know uh, probably gambling within the films was glamorized or yeah. now you know recently if you see or watch other seasons as well you know you see the drugs and all of these things are being uh, glamorized as well and just people just want to do them and uh, live that kind of life as well even if you go into Instagram even if you go into Facebook you know there are people showing of how they live their life as well which is good and you it might be normal but imagine that for one for 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 that person who actually cannot afford one percent of it what kind of problem or what kind of mindset he might have for the rest of his life because he cannot enjoy the same blessings you are enjoying particularly. Hold on to that thought. But I've got another question to add on over here and that is that, you know, I think, you know, since you uh, grew up with your brothers and you had, you know, you wanted to do kickboxing and everything, it was fantastic. I, I've got something to share as well. I grew up with five sisters in Alhamdulillah. <laughs> right. So I played Kish, I have played Pitu Garam, yeah. <laughs> I have played Ludo. Yeah. So I've played all of those games, man, yeah. which weren't really manly as well. And, and we had a great time. But now coming back to where you happen to be one of the few people who actually started to advocate for sports diplomacy as well. And talking about sports over in Pakistan, other than cricket, we're not really promoting any other yeah. sport. Uh, I think I'm going to give a shout out to PTV Sports because they're making sure that people watch football, people watch tennis. The other day, Sara Mehboob Khan's yeah. tennis match was on as mm. well. So I think that we are doing a great job. But how do you think that sports diplomacy will come in handy? What kind of policy making needs to be done? All right. So this is something that I, uh, you know, saw happen in America as well. When I went abroad for my exchange program, um, there are lots of times that uh, we think that, okay, diplomacy can only happen when 
politicians talk to each other. Yeah. But that's not um, uh, that's that's not where real diplomacy comes in. You need to have people to people ties. Yep. And like I said, sometimes you need to speak to people in their language. So with the young people now, we have the world's largest population of people oh, under thirty. Exactly. So what what is going to interest them? They they're not interested in what the NRO. I mean, honestly, I mean they should be. But they, they're not interested in those things. And even if they are, they're not going to understand political jargon. Yeah. Um, it is much easier to get, uh, you know how young people are very charged up. And I realized that because when I was working with kids who were prone to gang violence and, um, you know, who were part of uh, this whole culture of uh, violence and fights and everything, I realized that, okay, so ha they have all this energy. So yeah. teenagers have a lot of energy. So rather than, you can't just put them in a classroom and expect them to study, right? You can't just give them a book because they're used to all that aggression. Yeah. So how do you channelize that aggression? You put that into sports, you give them a focus, you make it a competition exactly. amongst each other. We've done conflict resolution to sports. We've wow. done sports for social change. Exactly. So we realized, and a lot of research has proven this, that even kids who had earlier been radicalized, uh, it is a great way to de-radicalize them yeah. because, you know, one, uh, you're not taking them out of their comfort zone. Exactly. So it's all right. So don't fight amongst each other. Play a sport. Yeah. You have aggression. You have anger. You want to vent out. Punch a bag. <laughs> Play football. Exactly. When, you're that, when you exert yourself, one, you know, the neurochemicals in your body that are released, um, they give you a lot of calm, calmness, they, they, they bring do. a lot of uh, equilibrium to your thoughts. And for example, mm -hmm. even if you have played for 90 minutes, man, you, you're not left with any more energy, energy to do anything to as well. Yeah, yeah, but then you also learn a lot. So like what we teach them is leadership. We teach them um, conflict resolution. We wow. teach them how to um, be okay with losing. Yeah. So, you know, you need to, an important thing that we need to do in our society. And this is a, a mindset that was incul inculcated in us as South Asians is that you know you always have to be the best at everything you have yeah. to win you have to win and if you you know if you don't get that 99% and you get a 98% you've lost your yeah, you, yeah, you're, yeah. you'll never hear the end of yeah, it yeah we have this mindset over here have, unfortunately and and you know i've been when you're a sportsman when you're a sportswoman you're told to celebrate your losses yeah. and learn from them exactly and that's okay and then you also have to learn that okay so you need to be okay with your differences yep. You need to celebrate your differences. And that's wonderful. And that's what we can do in terms of sports diplomacy, not just within societies and communities. We can do this within countries as well. Because I've made a lot of friends internationally. Uh, we've done a lot of exchange programs internationally yeah. with America, with now the Central Asian countries as well, where you bring a lot of young people together. You make them play sports. You make them bond. And um, with that platform, you make them have real conversations. Exactly. And I think I'm going to agree to it as well because I've got two incidents to share over here as well, ladies and gentlemen, and that is that I've seen since I spoke about Sara Mebu Khan as well. So imagine that she got a scholarship from United States of America where she was supposed to go to this university and play tennis for them as well. Yeah. So imagine what they were doing was they were gathering kids from all over the world into one place so that they can communicate, they can play together, and then they can channelize their energies, which is great. Not just that, uh, you know, I, I think a month ago or two months ago, Amir Khan was here, over here as well, the boxer. Yeah. So I was interviewing him mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, what made you do you start boxing? He was like, I was a very, uh, you know, rough kid. You know, I used to go to school, punch other kids as well. And when he was eight years old, his father took him to a boxing camp as well. And he was like, okay, you know, you need to start boxing. And from there onwards, now the world know him as the champion or Amir King Khan as well. So yeah. imagine how well his energies were channelized that now he's known Absolutely. by the rest of the world and he's inspiring a million other people. So Amir Bhai is a mentor as well. Yeah. I've met him a lot of times and he's always got some great advice. One of the biggest compliments that I've ever received was that he uh, told me that I want my daughter Namaisa to be like you Masha. because she hasn't seen a female boxing icon. Um, I had a similar story so I grew up, I used to be a very very chubby kid and then I was often you know there was bullying and everything and then um, you know, which is why I got into sports as well, just yeah. to uh, channelize my anger. It happens to everyone, you know, exactly. we just, uh, especially with young girls, we tell them it's not okay to get angry, yeah. you know, keep your voice soft, you know, keep your tone soft. It's not okay for you to get angry. Your brother can get angry, but you have to behave like a lady. So how so do we change these things up. now? How do we change them? We, I think uh, we need to provide a lot of role models. I know I personally, have inspired thousands, if not a uh, hundred thousand girls. Masha. 
So I have, and uh, what you need to do is you need to go out into the communities. Yeah. A lot of times people tell me, I said, no, I, I have written my research papers as well. But that's only appealing to a very limited percentage of the audience. What I love to do, um, especially since I moved to Islamabad, I've been working in places like Gujar Khan, Khania, um, you know, small villages out there, even in Islamabad. Yeah. Um, sometimes we go to the FG uh, girls' colleges, but mostly we go to these small Merabadis as well. Yeah, yeah. Right Chandra next to E11, have, yeah. Yes, no, not just E11, the G15 sectors, yeah. all of these places, you know, um, that are um, functional. Uh, that's where you need to have these real conversations. And, are, are, and are, are all of those people very well receiving on the other hand as well? You know, when you go and you try to talk to them, well, what is the first reaction you get? Okay, so the first reaction that they get is that uh, we try and uh, the first question that I ask them is that has an incident ever happened to you? All right. And that's when conversations, and this is something that I found in the best, most elite universities as well, and in public schools and colleges, and uh, even, you know, in Merabadis. All right. Girls have the same problems all over, over the, world. the world. And I've been to a lot of countries, and I've had the same stories over and over again. Exactly. So when they bond, we, we all often have this activity where we sit in a circle, and we ask, uh, you know, young women to share their stories. Yep. When they realize how common these problems are, yeah. they realize that they, they're more open to solutions. Exactly. So we tell them about helplines that they can contact. Right. We tell, tell them about. I mean, if their there rights. are any helplines, you can share it with our viewers as well. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. I, I, I definitely share them. So you know the cyber harassment helplines. We often tell kids to go online because see these people often don't have access to a phone. Exactly. So what do you tell them? You tell them that look, you need to also start building your own uh, start building trust in your own communities so whether it's community leaders i worked uh, with uh, young women and men in madarsas yeah we need to change these narratives so not all feminists are bad not all madarsas are evil either you know yeah. they are uh, a great way of schooling they're a great uh, way of building community i've been to some marvelous um, uh, you know religious seminaries where kids are we we started giving them this narrative where you need to uh, give sports some time as well. Exactly. And how do you tell them you need to uh, frame that, uh, you need to construct that conversation? Exactly. But, but over here, you know, I, I've been uh, thinking about it lately as well. And, you know, I've been to a lot of different schools over here. I'm glad that, you know, for all of those public schools we have over here, they have a lot of space for sports as well yeah. and for kids to go and roam around as well. But this new model of schools where, you know, they're, they're renting out houses and they're opening up schools in, in, and it's just classrooms. There's no park. There's no playgrounds, there's no sports period, nothing. Because when we were growing up, yeah. you know, we were taught that we are supposed to play. And there was this certain percentage of marks which we used to get if we For were. PEA. Yes, exactly. But now coming back to this point where, you know, we are advocating about sports diplomacy as well. We know that, you know, the entire world has been through a very difficult time. It was COVID and, you know, it's, it's been almost a year now that, you know, that people have been going through that. We have seen a rise in violence. We have seen a rise in, uh, God forbid, extremism as well. We have got seen uh, a rise in domestic violence itself. We've mm -hmm. seen the people have been beating their kids and wives up as well. And it's all stressed. So how do you think that people out there can utilize this time uh, and, and stay calm and do something better with their life? See, that's very important. Uh, you, you brought up something very, very important. First of all, we need to realize that every child has a right to play. Exactly. We often neglect that. We are so focused on grades that we've gotten into this model, like you rightly pointed out, universities that are literally built on two floors of yeah. a plaza. Yeah. And I was like, um, you know, you can't do that because a very important part of learning. I know I'm, I'm all for virtual education. You know, it's uh, during the pandemic we've had kids glued to their screens, they've been responsible, d d there's digital inclusivity, I get that. But then what about your other uh, lessons that you need to learn about life, about uh, you know your own body that you need to um, go out and went? So it's very important to inculcate periods of play and that right. can be done digitally as well. Yeah. I know a lot of people that are doing um, uh, you know personal training workshops online uh, I conducted a lot of these self-defense training classes online. Wow. So it's about how you utilize the, uh, the medium of um, uh, technology. And a lot of times we've seen that cases in domestic violence go down. Right. Um, a lot of times, see, with the pandemic in particular, when you put people in an enclosed environment, right, when you have to quarantine, that's another story. Yeah. You just need to, even then we encourage people to get up, do a couple of stretches, meditate, breathe, 
uh, do like 10 burpees. I know when, I was, um, when, when I'm uh, teaching younger kids something and there's, there's often a fight that would break out. Uh, rather than shouting at them or screaming at them, I tell them, all right, go to the corner, do 10 burpees, come back come and up. have a conversation yeah. with me. If I feel like that kid is still aggressive and shouting, go back. Take ten a round, <laughs> ten, 10 burpees, come back and speak to me. I think I, I would just do 10 burpees, come back and I'd be like, okay, you know, yeah. whatever you say, I, I'm <laughs> going to do it. That's yeah. wonderful. So, but so yeah, so yeah for, for families as well, so I was coming to that. So what we need to do is inculcate sports yeah. and incorporate sports or any form of exercise in our lives during the pandemic more than ever. Exactly. The reason that I've been able to survive, so ours is a close contact sports, right? Yeah. MMA and kickboxing. So I... Um, we're not perfect either. I experienced a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, let's say I, I was feeling very low as well during the right. pandemic because, you yeah. know, you're used to, um, you know, all, all, all these activities during your day. And for us just to be limited in our houses, yeah. being responsible, what do you do? So I started exploring all the trails of uh, Margala Hill. So wow. I started going trekking. Uh, cycling is a good hobby to pick yeah. up. Um, it's very good for your physical health as it well. Is, is. Uh, we just played a, a, a cricket match, media versus the parliamentarian. Some yeah, of yeah, your yeah. anchor persons exactly, from PTV yeah. were there as well. We beat them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Uh, but uh, no, but we enjoy it so much uh, because even during the pandemic, we realized so we're playing in an open space. Exactly. We're, uh, we're practicing social distance. Everyone was wearing masks. Yeah. But it was such a great activity. And it is important for everybody to, to have uh, such an activity in their life as well. But since we are running very short yeah. of time, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, and I think I'm going to agree to what she said, uh, and it's, there's a reason. Because while uh, when I got uh, COVID, I was in my room, I would make sure that I would get up every single day. At the same time, when I was getting up, you know, in, in my normal routine as well, you know, wash my cutlery, you know, do uh, probably change the bed sheets, you know, listen to a few songs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dance on them as well a little yeah. bit, just to uplift. And, and make sure that I'm going to give as many interviews as many they would be. And, and there was a reason that people take inspiration from that. And the video just went viral and it was everywhere. And people were actually kind of thanking me that you've actually given us uh, a ray of hope, a light of hope as well. And, and I think it is very important. But thank you very much, Anza, thank for joining so us. Much. It was wonderful to have you. And I could see that, you know, the way you spoke, that you've been on television before as well and that you've <laughs> done shows yourself. There was not a single second where I felt as if I had to put in an extra effort. Mm -hmm. But it was wonderful to have you. Please continue to strive for excellence. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Thank me. you very much. And, uh, for all of that, ladies and gentlemen, for, all, for everybody who's out there who are tuned in, I think that we need such examples. We need such heroes as well. Ladies and gentlemen, heroes in real life do not wear cape. And I think that's, that's what we wanted to share with you as well. Please, we need, we need to be the change ourselves and we need to bring it about for everybody else as well. But since, you know, she mentioned over here that, you know, we have universities made on two floors of a building. And that's true, man, that it's going to have an impact on how people are these days as well. We need open spaces. We need some light coming in. We need some playgrounds. We need the architects to do a wonderful job. But can the architects do a wonderful job? This is something which we'll be talking about in the next segment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning. Mosque or the Royal Mosque in Lahore commissioned by the 6th Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb in 1671 and completed in 1673 is the second largest mosque in Pakistan and South Asia and the fifth largest mosque in the world. Epitomizing the beauty, passion and grandeur of the Mughal era. It is Lahore's most famous landmark 
and a major tourist attraction. <laughs> Capable of accommodating 5,000 worshippers in its main prayer hall and a further 95,000 in its courtyard, it remains the largest mosque in the world from 1673 to 1986, a period of 313 years. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. For everybody who just got tuned into PTB World, you watching World this morning alongside Shazad Asan Khan. I hope everybody out there is doing wonderfully well. But this was a message when I got started with the show. But for all of those people who've just tuned in, I hope that you guys are carrying a bigger smile because that's the best curve on a human body, ladies and gentlemen. And before, uh, you know, talking about what we were talking about, you know, in the previous segment, where how important it is to have open spaces, where how important it is to you know, kind of keep that in mind that everybody needs to go play, have that sunlight in their room as well. I am a person who likes brightness quite a lot. You know, if there's no sun, I cannot actually have my breakfast. Even if it's cloudy, I don't feel all right, you know, because I just want the sun to be in my room. In fact, wherever I go, I just, I just love sun too much as well. And uh, a lot of times people do make mistakes while they're building houses or constructing houses as well. You know, you know, they'll just give it a weird design just because they thought that it's going to look good, but there won't be any sunlight, the air won't be passing by as well. And towards the end, you know, they're just suffocating themselves uh, within that particular house. So we really need good practices out here, you know, when we talk about construction, when we talk, talk about architecture. And not just that, I think, ladies and gentlemen, that architecture plays a very important role in kind of, you know, uh, keeping the heritage intact as well you know because for whatever we are building is going to be heritage at some point and we really want to represent the country or the culture the way it is and i think it is our responsibility to do so but how uh, you know good of a professional architecture is something which we'll be talking about when you're going to a university and you're studying architecture how different is that from the practical work and is it you know, is it, is it as much fun as it was while you were learning and is it well paid as well? You know, these are the questions which we'll be asking uh, from uh, some not really fresh graduates. But yes, yeah, they, it's been two years, they've graduated, they're working, they're on the ground as well. They're doing all of their field work. So we wanted to get a bit of experience. So for all of those people who've graduated so far as an architect and haven't landed themselves a job, I think today it's going to be a good segment with you guys as well. So ladies and gentlemen, first up, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by an architect. She is Miss Nisha Nasser. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Absolutely good. perfect. Thank you very much for joining us. You're keeping it all well and wonderful. And alongside Miss Nisha Nasser, ladies and gentlemen, it's always important to accompany a friend um, because, you know, you never know. Uh, wherever I used to go in my early years when I was on television, I used to take a lot of my friends with me just for moral support. But she's not just here for moral support. She's an architect herself. She is Miss Sumbal. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How Thank are you, you very much for joining us, guys. It's wonderful to have you. So, are you guys good? Yeah. Comfortable? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank no you. problem. <laughs> so, let me get started. Architecture as a profession. How have you found it so far? Uh, we graduated in 2018. And um, ever since that, it's, it has been a tough journey, right. especially when we started off, because it was really hard getting a job. There are like 150 fresh graduates in Islamabad graduating every year. Yeah. So it is pretty hard getting our first job. And uh, once we got our job, it wasn't well paid. Okay. And that was another hurdle for us. So we did that, but it was good because it's like a house job, like... Um, when doctors graduate, they have a house job for like one year or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did our, this is our house job where we're just learning on site, on job. And it's like we did this for two years and then wow. we started off our own firm. Wow. It's uh, called the design office. All right. And uh, we have like fresh graduates that come in and they're working with us just because um, 
uh, we believe we have this belief that we're uh, gonna help them and teach them because yeah. when they're not g learning enough at school all right and i think <laughs> that's pretty sad <laughs> <laughs> i mean so you see so you're paying hundreds and thousands of rupees to your university and then you're realizing after two years of your graduation that they weren't really teaching us what we really needed to learn. I personally believe so. <laughs> that's, that's an irony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty sad, yeah. actually. Uh, I think they need to, we really need to up our game with the education standards <laughs> in Pakistan. So uh, we or, or, or there can be other, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm cutting you, but I think that there can be other reasons to it as well. Because if we are to ask this question from your university teachers, they would be like, hey, you know, what are you talking about Nisha and Sumbal? They weren't really attentive in the class. <laughs> <I'm sure laughs> you know, so it happens. Yeah. But Sumbal, coming down to you as well, now you guys have your own office. Nisha mm. just told us that, you know, that you guys even yeah. hire all of those people who are fresh yeah. graduates. First things first, do you pay them well? Yeah, we do. <laughs> All right. From whatever you guys used to get, yeah. do, you, do you pay them very well? Yeah, because I actually believe and we actually believe that money is motivation. So you need to <laughs> give them money so that they should they should love to work. They should they should not I like this kind be... of motivation. Man. Money is motivation. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, because you know, you spend 5 years in university and you you've spent so much of your uh, parents' money and then you're just getting paid 20,000 or 30,000. That's yeah. actually less and you know most of the people they actually just spend that money in traveling and other things so I think uh, we should give them money so yeah. that they should love architecture and they should love to come to the job yes. and do something good or do something productive and architecture to me I'll be I'll be very honest ladies and gentlemen is a form of art and uh, 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 to be honest you know for all of those wonderful people who've done wonderful jobs all over the world you know when you go to Middle East you go to UK you go to anywhere in the world, you will see that they have this special essence and they will keep on going about it as well. And we need to build up that narrative within the architecture field over here. So now that you guys have got your own firm, congratulations mm -hmm. in the first place, mm -hmm. that you really did not succumb to the pressure of your boss and you made <laughs> your own firm and that you mm -hmm. guys are empowered ladies, which I think a lot of people need to take inspiration from as well. But how is it as a profession? Is it a tough profession? Is it something which really gets onto your nerves as well? Because you really need to be an expert on project management as well if you're an architect. Is Def it right? Definitely. Yeah. It, Definitely. We, we need to be an all-rounder. And the best part of it is it's like a huge canvas that we have. Yeah. And so we can do whatever we want to. And it's like a little baby when it starts building. And um, we, we really feel that we've done something really yeah. big when it's there. And um, so it as a profession, I personally believe that yes, um, it is fun because it's art yeah. and it's te it's technical and it's art. So we enjoy doing both the things. And it's aesthetic as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Basically, yes. So we get to do a lot of stuff that we haven't done before. Mm. And um, so you know, talking about you know when we are talking about mm -hmm. newer designs, when we are talking about architecture itself. I need to know what are the most common mistakes people make while they're building houses because over here in Pakistan we do not have this concept of hiring an architecture uh, or architect for that matter and just doing things by ourselves. I mean imagine mm -hmm. my father's into construction, he built an entire plaza just what he thought about it yeah. as well and, and, it's, and it's there and every now and then the basement is full of water, yes. Yeah, so, so, so you should have hired an architect. I think your question answers the thing. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest yeah. mistake is not hiring an yeah. architect. Because people, no, I, I'm going to tell you this reason. The reason behind this is that people think that they charge a lot of money. Yeah. But look, uh, whenever someone So they someone do charge asks, a lot of money. No. That's what you said. You no, said we but don't. Look. No, no. The thing is, whenever someone asks me that question, I always say, there's like, I don't know if the answer is actually good. But the thing is that, you know, uh, while working with uh, a doctor, a nurse actually understands how to do an operation. Yeah. But you, if you have to go for an operation for anything, Allah na kare, <laughs> like in, if you have to go, yeah. so you... You won't go for the nurse. You will actually go for the surgeon. Yeah. So when you have to construct something, you should go to the architect instead of doing instead of going to a layman who yeah. does not understand architecture. Exactly. Because there are so many mistakes that people yeah, make. Share, share, share those mistakes. Yeah. With us. 
Mo uh, the most important mistakes are like light, um, air, there's no uh, proper ventilation yeah, for yeah. a house, there's no proper light for the house, which actually, you know, uh, comes to this thing that uh, people are spending more money, like, uh, you know, they're using ACs and they're using heaters yeah, yeah. and then they're, um, you know, they're putting on lights because there are no natural light in the house. Yeah. So you need to, uh, you need to, you know, overcome those uh, mistakes of, of a house or a, or a building. Like, like you said that, you know, water and plumbing, yeah. you have to, because an architect uh, does not, you know, uh, he's, he's just not an architect, uh, architect, he's actually a designer, he's exactly. a plumber, he's everything. Exactly. He, he decides everything, the material, the plumbing, you know, all the pipes and whatever we uh, actually, we think that, you know, sh uh, should be a better solution, we go for that. So what you're trying to say over here is that architect is actually going to save you money in the longer run. Exactly. With, with all of that, those techniques which yeah. they have learned as well and by applying those techniques as well. And ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, uh, to be honest, I think that whenever I've seen uh, a building which has been constructed by an architect, you can actually tell the difference. And whenever you, you'll actually see a building constructed by a dropout who actually wanted to be an architect, you will see a difference over there as well. Mm -hmm. So what kind of, I'm sorry that I'm going to ask you this as well and we shouldn't be asking about because, but money is motivation. Mm -hmm. how, <laughs> how much money do we really need to spend if we, on an architect, if we are constructing a 500 yard plot or probably, you know, a canal or, you know, something like that, because that's very common over here in Islamabad at least. Um, How much would an architect charge? I think <laughs> a fresh grad would, uh, is going to charge you for a one canal house. Yeah. That's what's, yeah. So a fresh graduate is going to charge you probably two lakhs and then two it lakhs. goes up right. with the experience. Which is, I think, legit, and <laughs> <laughs> it is fine if they're asking for more. Yeah. And uh, maybe a ten-year-old graduate was, is going to ask for like, I 10? guess, uh, ten. <laughs> because two years is two, yeah. so the ten is ten. Yes. Yeah, but they actually grow and yeah. they change. And exactly. They but then yeah. you see, they're going to save so much money with. See, they're going to save money in uh, in the shorter period, yeah. and then the long-term uh, goal to save money. Exactly. So if they're saving money initially with not hiring an architect, they're definitely going to spend more money oh, all their lives. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's true and I just cannot uh, agree more to it as well, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's about time that Pakistanis do realize that as well. Because the, all of these as aspects play a very important role in how you actually feel. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you live in a house where there's no ventilation, where there's no sunlight. Uh, I think that you'll be just depressed all day and all night as well. And because it's just because of the fact that you know, we're not doing what we're supposed to do by the nature as well. You know, we really need to do that. So talking about all of this, uh, we've talked about, we've touched upon all of those uh, wrong practices which people do have while they're constructing their houses. But what about commercial units? And uh, I just, it just came across my head as well. Did that ever happen to you that you guys started with a project? I'm sorry, if you, if you want to lie about it, you can lie. <laughs> you can be honest about it as well. That you started to construct, it's like two floors up and all of a sudden you realize, hey, you know what, we've actually messed up the basement or something. Have you ever come across such a situation? Or, or anybody else who might have come across such a situation. So what do you do in that situation? Uh, there are always solutions for things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what there actually there was a time that uh, it didn't actually get uh, constructed, but it was on the verge of getting constructed. Right. Uh, con getting constructed, and we found out a mistake. But then you know, there's always and always there's a solution. That is that is the ultimate goal of, of an architect. If you're hiring a, hiring an architect, you're gonna get solutions. You're yeah. gonna uh, come up with problems, and you, he uh, or she is gonna give you solutions. That is the best thing about an architect. Exactly. A contractor or some layman <laughs> wouldn't give you th those solutions and even we actually c get connected with the person even like uh, you know once we've c constructed for them we're going to be in contact with them forever if they need help if they need yeah. anything. Because you'll so be having those maps and you will let, yeah, let them exactly. know okay, you know these exactly. things are there and whatnot. It is important. Now coming back to the point I think that you know for you guys it is very important to be uh, in harmony or in synchronization with the Thekedar as well because yeah. we have that Thekedar concept. And Thekedar themselves, I'm not saying that they, they're not good people, but they really do not want anybody else to boss around on the site mm. as well. They don't want women to boss around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. exactly. That's, that's what my point was. But <laughs> since it was national television, I didn't want it, it to look this way as well. 
So how do you go about that? Because this is a real challenge. Mm -hmm. And then for all of those people who uh, are the laborers and all of them, you know, they, it's it's like an argument every single day. Uncle, why are you not doing this? I've made 50 houses, what do you know? Yeah, yes. So how do you go about it? it it's, a, it's a stigma. Yeah, yeah so we started <laughs> off and like we were like two girls and a guy. So the last solution was to have a guy with us to all do right. that. Okay. But we started off with doing it... Um, uh, we've been very convincing and I think we've been very lucky that we've met really nice people oh. who've not really bothered us on site, although Amazing. that is a really big challenge. Mm. And um, otherwise, when we have no other way out, we <laughs> definitely take the guy with us. Because <laughs> generally, if I tell you something once, uh, it happened so that um, I was at the site and the guy, the contractor, didn't want to understand anything what I was telling him. So he <laughs> he's like... Uh, can you please call the other guy because <laughs> he explains it better and I'm like uh, okay I'm I'm here with the same uh, degree with yeah. the same experience I can help you with this mm -hmm. and uh, it was really hard going through all those <laughs> times <laughs> but how is it now uh, it is better um, alhamdulillah since we've uh, we have the experience we can understand okay. things more and um, we can explain it better to them so it's going fine now. So, so it's wonderful. Wow, yeah, wonderful. And I think first, uh, when, you, when you don't have anything to show to them, na, so they're, they're actually more like this, that you know they're going to come off and they're going to be like, uh, you don't know anything. So every time someone says that to me, I'm, I'm always like, you know, because uh, that's something so cliche, that's done in every house. We, we're the designers. We want it to be good and something specific yeah. for this person. So I think that line actually helps me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because then they're like, okay, we, we cannot come up with part, a new thing. Yeah. And maybe. The funniest part is when we go on site and uh, they've done something wrong and we go like, this isn't right, you're not supposed to do this. Yeah. So they go like, uh, no, it is going to look good. <laughs> and so they act as if they're also the designers <laughs> with us. And it's really hard convincing them because they're like, we've already done this in a million yeah. houses and you need to understand that this is right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like going to a designer shop for a Sherwani and telling HSY that this is where I want the piping as well. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but thank you very much for joining us. It was wonderful to have you on the show as well. First, because you are definitely a source of inspiration for a lot of other girls who are out there as well. Mm -hmm. Not just girls, even boys as well. You're uh, role models. We want to wish you best of luck for your firm which you built uh, with the name of Design. The, the design, design Office. Office. The Design Office. And we just want you to know that uh, even sky is not the limit. Yeah. And yeah, just prosper and strive for excellence as well. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think today it was a wonderful morning for me where I got to learn from three different ladies and they had some wonderful stories to share. And I think that one should always be open for learning. One should be always open towards newer ideas as well. And hey, you know what? It's not going to harm anybody. So please make sure that you look after yourselves. Remember us all in your prayers because my producer really wants me to, you know, kind of sh shut up now. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, please do write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of Wall This Morning, on your television screens down below. On Facebook, it's Wall This Morning. On Twitter, it's Wall This Morning without a G. On YouTube, you're going to go look for PTV Wall and then the most viewed show on PTV Wall, Alhamdulillah, is Wall This Morning. The Fabulous Repeat is going to be at 5 past midnight. Till the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good morning.